So you guys might have seen my video that I shot last year, which was a day in my life where I walked through exactly the habits and the strategies and the scheduling I used to not only have a successful business, but also do a doctorate. So I'm in medical school, but for traditional Chinese medicine. And one of the things that I got was a very interesting comment from a couple of people that was a little bit negative. And it was along the lines of the fact that I never have free time, no time for play, no time to really do that much. And this brings up a very, very good insight and a huge teaching point that I want to share in this video. Because 99% of people will not do one thing that will dramatically change their life. And that's what we're talking about today here. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. FYI, if you get the book, send me a receipt to my email. I'll give you a $100 bonus course for free. That's more material on the book, so you can check that out. Now, one of the things, if you're interested in becoming the quote 1%, and I just mean someone who's improved their life to the point where they're doing amazing in all parts of their life, the first link in the description is a free journaling worksheet on how to plan out your best year ever with some of the goal setting strategies I've used here. So you could click that link below, download that. You'll also get an email every couple of days on how to use goal setting to change your life. So what is that thing <laughs> that most people will not do? That thing is that most people will not do whatever it takes to live a better life. You know, the first thing that this comes up to is that most people like the idea of success more than they like the actual process. I heard someone else say this in a very wise way where they said, everyone likes the idea of being a rock star, but very, very few love playing and writing music every day. You know, when I first started building my business and even just getting into self-growth stuff, at the start, I would be like, okay, you know, I'll work on the weekend. There's like Scrubs is on or there's a new show on or my friends are going out to get drinks and it's Wednesday night or we're going to go out dinner. But... It would always be the weekend when I would work on all my self-growth or my business stuff, which was much harder and much more long-term thinking was required. But when I became really committed to the goal of building my business, you know what that meant for three years? I came home after work, went to the gym, and then went to a cafe for three hours to work on my business, seven days a week. I saw my girlfriend at the time on the weekend for three years, only on the weekend. Before, we were seeing each other during the week once or twice. For three years, I did that. I came home to work on my business, just on my business. No Netflix, no chilling, no none of that. Because I wanted to have a better future for myself. I wanted to have a better life. But so many people that write me are like how I used to be. We work on things only when it's convenient and not because we're very committed. So in the same way, you know, when people criticize me for being like, no time for fun, relaxation, or play, like, no shit, for lack of a better word, I'm in a medical program, and I'm running a business. Like, did you think that would take 15 hours a week? It's like 50 hours, and then 20 hours is more realistic, and then you throw in cooking every day, going to the gym, that's it. Like, that's a six-day week right there. And then you throw in friends, and that's my whole life, right now. So I don't think people fully understand what it takes to live a better life. It doesn't mean some insanity like this, some crazy work hours. It doesn't mean that. But sometimes it does. And if it does, that's the price you got to pay. All right. Now the second one is that most people only work on their goals when they want to. Right? This is just building off of the first thing I said. You know, when I researched Michael Phelps, I was studying a little bit about how often he trained and how often he prepped to be in the Olympics. Now, this dude is a high achiever. He's one of the most meddled Olympians of all time, right? He's no slacker. And what he did was he spent five to six hours a day training every single day for five years. So think about that for a sec. Imagine how hard it is to go to the gym one hour a day, five days a week for one month. This dude did five to six hours per day every day for five years. That's no joke, right? That's 2,000 days almost. And yet we struggle with doing a little bit each day. And the point here is not for me to beat you up or for you to beat yourself up. 
but for us to understand what does it really take to change your life? To become the best, that's what it takes. But for you, guess what? It may only take one hour a day. I'm not asking you, I'm not like Gary Vee over here, work 100 hours a week, sleep six hours a night, look exhausted all the time. I'm not saying that. But find that one hour per day you can commit to building a better life for yourself. Rather than complaining and blaming and hating the world and judging successful people because you want to be there, why not dedicate that one hour per day, seven days a week, that you are religious about? You guard that That is your sacred ground every single day that you're going to dedicate to building yourself up. The skills, the resources, the mindset, the habits to becoming the next level version of yourself. That is non-negotiable. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend wants to come over, you tell them, hell no, I'm at church. Different kind of church. Your friends want to hang out. No, come in an hour. Your show's on. Doesn't matter. Skip the show or do your one hour earlier in the day. So 99% of people, I know for a fact, will not do what it takes to build a better life. But you can use this like the fuel that I used in my own life. Because I knew that one in a million people would be willing to do the work every day. I knew that one in a million would be willing to not see their girlfriend during the week for three years. And that is why I am now building a life that only one in a million can have. And if you think this way, if you adopt this belief and think, you know what? That's great that I know how the 99% think, but now what does the achiever think and how do they live? Then you become that person. I don't believe that people are doomed to be the 99%. You become whatever you decide you're going to become. And so if you say, you're right, Alex, I get it. Then you can decide to live your life differently. You can decide to, you know what, when I'm writing my book, what does the average person do and what does the great person do? When I'm asking out a girl or asking out that guy, what does the average person do? What does the exceptional person do? And this can become your guiding mantra for your life to help just skyrocket it to the next level. 99% of people won't take action on their goals every single day. Will you? Now, if you want to prove it to me that you're that one in a million, like I'm your daddy, and you got to prove it to me to earn daddy's love, then download that free worksheet before it gets any weirder and fill that out to plan your best and most inspiring year. You do that, you're going to be already the one in a million because most people don't even set goals. So download that, get started, and then come on over, check out my last videos there and there.